Hi and welcome to another video from the Intelligent Auto channel. Today we have this 2016 Audi Q5. It's a 2 litre TDI, it's a Euro 6 and it's a CNH engine code. The customer complaint is the engine management light keeps coming on. She's had it to a couple of different garages who keep pulling up the fault P2002 DPF particulate filter efficiency below threshold. She brought it in to me last week as every other repairer she's had it to has just reset the fault and sent her on her way. Within a couple of days, engine management lights back on, same fault stored. After consulting technical documentation for this fault, there's a known problem with this engine. The fault is stored because of an inefficiency within the low pressure AGR circuit. So first of all, I'm going to show you a diagram of how the system is laid out and why the fault is triggered. So again at the not so white board, um, I've done one of my famously crap drawings. Quickly going to go through the system. This is the air intake, this is the air filter, this is the turbocharger here and this is the exhaust setup on it. So first of all air filter and what we see is we see a pipe coming up onto the bottom of the turbo intake which is recirculated exhaust gas from the DPF. So the air comes into the turbocharger into the compressor housing and goes off to the to the intake manifold. Exhaust gases are escaping through the through the cat and the DPF. So the exhaust gases come through the cat, the diesel oxidization cat, they come round and the DPF actually sits under the, the turbo on this vehicle. It comes through there, comes through the DPF and this is towards the exhaust tailpipe here. Now what you'll see is on the diagram there's a couple of components um, which you wouldn't normally see in, a, in an exhaust system. First one being is this component here which is actually the EGR cooler. So the EGR cooler is actually bolted into the back of the DPF filter. So when low pressure EGR is activated what happens is this flap which is at the back of the DPF that goes into the closed position. So that closes here. And the EGR valve, which is situated on top of the cooler, that goes to the open position. It's basically just a flap. So the exhaust gases are coming through here, through the DPF. And basically, because the outlet to the exhaust is blocked, they're forced up through the cooler and back into the air intake and recirculated. Hence, exhaust gas recirculation. The problem lies with these is this cooler gets blocked up. So when this EGR activation occurs, the exhaust gases can't pass through this cooler in any great quantity. And what happens is we start getting a buildup of pressure within the DPF. Now the DPF has a pressure sensor attached to it, as most DPFs do. What happens is that DPF pressure sensor then starts reporting high pressure. The vehicle's ECU sees this as a blockage in the DPF. So what it'll do is it'll start activating regeneration. So it'll start trying to clean this DPF. After the regeneration is complete, the EGR, the EGR circuit starts to function again. And then once again, it sees the pressure rising within the DPF. So thus it logs the DPF P2002 DPF efficiency below threshold because as far as the ECU is concerned there's actually a blockage within the DPF when there's actually a blockage within the EGR cooler. So I'm going to show you what the EGR cooler looks like. Um, I've got the parts here to repair this car um, and maybe visually when you see it it'll explain better how the system works. So this is the EGR cooler as you can see got channels through it so this is bolted into the back of the DPF so the exhaust gases when the EGR valve is open it's the EGR valve there it's just the butterfly I don't know if I can open it that EGR valve opens those exhaust gases pass through this cooler and they go back up into the turbocharger which is sitting here when the EGR valve is inactive the exhaust gases pass through the DPF and go towards the tailpipe which come out here. Sitting below the cooler here is the 
is the uh, exhaust flap, which when that's closed, that opens, so thus forcing exhaust gases through the cooler. So that bolts into the back of the DPF with three bolts. Um, but it's a bit of a pig to get to. What I'm going to do is I'm going to probably take photographs during the um, strip down of this. So I think it's going to be very difficult to, to video it because it's, it's all kind of quite low down in the engine bay, but I'll see what I can do. Uh, I'll try and get as much of the repair as possible on either photograph or video for you. This is the engine bay of the car, and as you can see, everything's pretty tightly um, packed in here. First thing I need to do is remove this cross brace. That's going to come off. I'm also going to have to take off this panel here, which means removing the wipers, so that I can take out, there's, a, there's actually a, a panel in the bulkhead here, which, which is covered by this heat shield and that'll come out and that'll give me better access down the back of this uh, turbocharger. The turbocharger's sitting here. Air box is obviously going to be coming off, so this, this panel at the front needs to, needs to be removed. Um, I'll put the camera on um, while I'm removing these parts, uh, just so you can maybe see where screw locations are and what have you. I've actually used um, all data to identify how to dismantle this. I'm going by the, the manufacturer's guided uh, strip down procedure to do this. Next thing is take the airbox out. Give a better view down there. This is the OxyCat here. That's the DPF here. That's the exhaust coming out the DPF here. And then right up behind it, back here, is the cooler. So as you can see, it's, a, it's no mean feat to try and remove this. So I'm going to crack on. And the next thing I've got to do is disconnect these fuel pipes, get them out the way. Got to take this intake off. There's also a, a pipe coming around the back here, which is the, the turbo boost pipe. That needs removing to get better access down the back of here.
arm this far in you can see the top of the EGR valve there um, so I'm going to have to keep stripping I think to get down to the cooler which is under the turbo so we'll crack on and there's the evidence we're looking for Got the EGR valve removed as you can see it's quite a bit of contamination inside that cooler Let's see if I can get you see the back of the cooler there it's uh, pretty plugged up so the diagnosis was conclusive well here it is it's out as you can see choked to death see the white it's actually had blue a bit of soot in that end not too much so that's the cause of the p2002 dbf efficiency below threshold EGR cooler so again perfect example of a uh, there's plenty of companies out there who will react to a DPF code and just clean the DPF, charge you for it, and uh, put the light out and send you on your way a couple of hundred quid shy, uh, and they do not actually get to the bottom of the problem. See, so, yeah, nothing to do with the DPF, EGR cooler. Mm -hmm.